What is going on everybody man? King Recon here. Now I know for a fact I'm not the only one who hasn't been able to stop thinking about this chapter, bro. Every single facet of it, man, from the ending of the flashback, thinking about the entire journey of my boy Odin, to the second portion with Conjurer actually being the traitor, and thinking back to the entire journey up until this point in time with Odin, and with us meeting him dressed Rosa, both in the past and present times. You know, it hits, son. But in this video, in this video, I want to specifically, because it's gonna be kind of like an afterthought type of thing, but I want to specifically talk about the ending of the chapter, man, because it's what I can't stop thinking about, son. When you're at sea, you fight against pirates. Bro, just look at that, man. Like, dog, that is a panel 12 years in the making, dude, since chapter 505. That stretch, 504, 505, 506, of getting these back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back incredible chapters with these captains after Luffy delivered his, his, his legendary Celestial Dragon Punch, and Law and Kid were like, yo, this kid is kind of crazy, dude. Like, yo, what's wrong with him? And from them exiting the auction house, loan us the auction house trio, and just going in there like so. I had the panels pulled up, bro. I was reading the arc last night. Um... And just look at this, bro. Like, like, dude, going from going all the way from from here, you know, to where we are now, bro. And then, see, I really, really hope that we get a panel like this in uh, our panels, a sequence of panels like this in the next um in the next chapter or in, or in the coming chapters, you know, stuff like this. Uh, let's see if I can get it in in focus. But like, you know, whenever Luffy uses his his gum gum balloon, let's see if I can get it in focus, like right there. Regardless, you've you've read it, you've watched it, or, or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. So like the sequence whenever Luffy uses uh, the gum gum on a balloon, and then uh, Kid uses repel. Lock comes up in like somewhere, and like doom. The circle comes up, he beheads them, and it's just like shamudas, and it's just having all three of them execute techniques next to each other, and then the bickering that they do. And, and that they have while while going about it is so awesome to be met. And you know, the conversation between these three captains because of the way that they are and because they're rivals, but whenever they're together, it feels like no one can stop them. And like, it gives you that confidence like, bro, you know, because before, the, before I saw this panel, I had continued to think about the all the possibilities that are going to take place in Onigashima because you know we're going up against Kaido and Big Mom. You feel me? So you know, think about what characters are going to show up. Well, will Marco come here? Will Weevil come here? You know, uh, will any Admirals make an appearance? Any more Yonko? You know, there's a lot of questions. You know, will, will Hancock and or Kobe make it here with Mihawk? We we don't know, bro. You feel me? There's so many things going on around the world. We don't know who's truly going to make it to Wano aside from the characters that that, that, that we're with. Uh, but after seeing this Luffy Law and Kid panel, it, it showed me that like Odo wants this to be like a passing of the torch type of thing. I mean, we knew that that, that was gonna be the case, especially after 924, whenever Luffy and Kid made a declaration that um they they didn't want uh, the other taking the glory for taking down Kaido. So obviously, was, both of them were gonna be involved in doing that. But with Big Mom coming into the picture, it like changed everything. We're like, man, dude. I mean, I can understand these two taking on Kaido, but Big Big Mom and Kaido, like. Stuff has to go down, but after seeing that this uh, this panel, you know, the chapter, we're like, yo, man, it brought back vibes from whenever I first read Saba Aori. It was like, dude, if these three team up, ain't no one boxing with them, dude. Especially if it's those three and then their squads behind them. Like, yo, man, these 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 uh these panels back in Saba Aori, like, dude, if if we get panels like this. In next week's chapter with like all three of them using coordinated attacks, man. And for me as a JRPG fan, like, yo, this man like a turn-based battle system with Luffy, Law, and Kid. And like, oh, you're coordinating their limit breaks together. So like, Law uses something, coordinates with Kid, uses something, Luffy, bro. If they do, if they do any type of coordinated attack against, against Kaido, I'm gonna lose my mind. Like, yo, room shambles, brings him up. Kid uses like both of his, repels him, and Luffy's right behind him. Gomu, gomu, no. Dragon man gear fourth dragon man it just ah, decks him or something i don't know dude it's gonna be crazy uh but you know the way that it was structured too bro with the reveal i mean it was just perfectly set up because because the last time that we saw them was them heading off and us not knowing what in the world happened to them and with us starting off with the scabbards, I truly thought we were gonna get into a scenario where we entered Onigashima and we were going to see some of the Straw Hats 
doing some sort of espionage around the mansion while the fire festival was going down. I thought that like Sanji, Robin, Nami, some of those characters were going to go invade Onigashima because the blueprint for the mansion, you know, is, is, is something that was a plot point introduced earlier on the arc. So I thought that was going to come into fruition where we're going to have characters infiltrating the mansion, you know, getting to see if they could find some sort of weakness or some sort of point of uh, a point of view to where they can have uh, a situation where where they could be in control. Uh, so like whether it be from a vantage point or being able to like bring in a major amount of, of allies from one specific location like some kingdom stuff like i was thinking it was gonna be something like that so i thought we weren't gonna see luffy and especially not law and kid until later on the arc with the way that kid um left i didn't think we we're gonna see him until halfway through the arc and with the way that law left i didn't think that we were gonna see him until we figured out who it was that he was talking to in 955 was you feel me so with the way everything ended off, I could have sworn that we weren't going to see Luffy until he showed up like, kind of like Whitebeard with the Moby Dick at, at Marineford, just out of nowhere. Like, they're like, yo, what is this rumbling? Thousand Sunny comes up, Luffy comes down, and they're ready to box, bro, you feel me? And then like, right there, everybody else pops up uh, from their espionage mission, rest of the Straw Hats, rest of the Scabbards. That's how I thought it was going to go down. But no, man, Oda broke my ankles. And instead, treating us to the this wonderful chapter that takes place after this flashback which like i said started in october so we have spent october the end of october november december january february and half of march not having any sort of sighting of the king we have had mentionings we have had panels you know referring to luffy but not being able to see him and for the fact that he's my favorite character bro in the story Whenever I saw the scar in his chest and he said, sorry, we're a little late, yo, my heart started racing and I started shaking. I was like, <laughs> and I love, I'm a sucker for stuff like this, where like you don't see their faces up until the final uh, frame where you see like what they look like. That's something I really enjoyed in how they handled in both the manga for a bit and then the anime when uh, they came back post time skip and you didn't get to see their faces or the full designs until you actually got to see them in, in their particular portions. And like that stuff was is super cool to me. Like I appreciate not knowing the what they fully look like until, and especially with Luffy and the, rocking his coat. I mean, yo, he's rocking the coat. He's rocking an emperor's coat. It is a goat with a coat. And he's not the only one, bro. Kid is rocking a coat and Law might be rocking Corazon's cloak, bro. And it's like, like their entire journeys are culminating in this point to where all three of them could leave this being emperors dude to the entire world especially especially luffy dog like and when i saw him rocking the coat man i saw my boy dean kumi posting this on twitter uh yesterday it reminded him it reminded him of uh, of a little uh so at the end of the Rowan Stan uh special that they did they showed an adult luffy you know, with the little chin badger. I think I might have it somewhere around here. Yeah, I think I think this one's it. It is. So right here, you see like an adult Luffy with like a little chin badger, and you see him like rocking some sort of coat here, looking extremely fresh. And uh, we know that Oda, because it's the Romance Dawn special, he had that in mind that Luffy would one day rock that. And then of course we know that post time skip, whenever he revealed the the designs that he was thinking about going for, and then he went for of course the designs that that we know from post time skip. One of those initial concept art designs for Luffy had him rocking a coat post time skip, and he looks so dope in that. So the fact that he's actually rocking it here, goat in a coat, ah, let's go, dude. Yo, and y'all know me, man. I'm a sucker for coats and suits. That's why that scene in chapter 893 with Carter Crew, whenever he rock, took off his coat and was ready to box, that junk had me marking out, man. I'm a mark for that type of stuff in any medium. Any medium. Somebody's wearing something and they take it off ready to box, that stuff is hype. That shows that you are ready to go up in like swimwear and see someone in hands truly. So if I get a moment in this arc with Luffy rocking the coat, he gets in front of Kaido, takes it off, and is like, dog, I'm here, baby. I'm here. I want to lose my mind. Right, so... But the way that it was structured before that, you know, with right in the moment that, um, you know, taking advantage of the situations where everybody's just extremely shocked, uh, Kanjiro states that he is Kurozumi Kanjiro. Then you get Kaido's, uh, in a dope page spread, you get like a bunch of Kaido's uh, ships, his underling ships popping up out of nowhere in the midst of this chaos. I mean, it's an emotional chaos and now they're legitimately being overwhelmed. Like things are going very, very bad. And then who do we depend on when things are going very, very bad? The king. I can hear Luffy's here playing, dude. And uh, just the way that it was set up and 
Continue, we see Law's ship come out of the ground. We see Law, then Kid, bro. I was like, there's no way. And just, you know, you're already seeing the, the bickering and, or I should say the little character interactions they have with each other. He's like, oh, so you shut up after all, Jaggy. And like, I thought you have the word for taking down Kaido. And I love stuff like that, man. When you're at sea, you fight against pirates. And it's so amazing to me, right? Like, like I said before, I didn't expect to see these three individuals together until halfway through the arc. Oda saying, we're starting off at full speed, bro. We're starting off with full speed. Y'all know how I am when it comes to walks. You know, my Discord server was called the walk to, what was it, uh, Kaido's Man? I forgot what it was called. It was it was the walk to, to the Onigashi. It was something. I forgot what it was, but it was the walk to someone's castle. I think it was the walk to Kaido's castle. Whatever it was, dude. But I continue to say that whenever we get that walk, whenever we get that, that scene or that situation, Whenever uh, the Straw Hats go and walk to Kaido's mansion or have that walk to Onigashima, the walk to the Fire Festival, it was going to be next level hype, especially since we haven't seen all of the Straw Hats together in a very, very long time. Since Dress Rose, and since 2013, in real, real time, seven years, we haven't had all the Straw Hats together outside of color pages and movies and TV specials. Like, yo, we have not had them all together. So I thought Oda was gonna treat us to a magnificent reunion with all of them having a walk together to Kaido's match. You know, that's just, it's a dream uh, sequence of panels that I've had in my mind for what's gonna take place in Onigashima. It's gonna end up being one of my favorite scenes in the entire series if it does end up happening. But now we have a situation to where instead of the espionage mission, I mean, we could still have the espionage mission, don't get me wrong. Because I, I still believe that Luffy, Kid, and Law are gonna come knocking on Kaido's door and be like, baby, we're here. Now, everybody else, I'm not sure. Because I'm not sure if everyone else is on the Sunny. You know, or at the very least, all of them are on the Sunny. We could have some characters going out and, and trying to find a good vantage point for everybody to enter, you know, by going into Kaido's mansion and whatnot. We don't know. But what I can tell you is that now I am super, super excited for the spreads that are incoming. Because I can just imagine, can you imagine a panel? Just this massive, huge panel. Do you remember that spread in Marineford? When Whitebeard is telling, he's gathering up his troops on the Moby Dick to go out and invade Marineford. And he puts up his staff into the air and tells everybody to go. It's this wonderful double page spread. Can you imagine a sequence like that? But with Luffy, Kid, and Law and their crews behind them. So it's like this massive spread. We're treated like two back-to-back -back spreads. The first spread is the Fire Festival. You know, we see uh, uh, Kaido, Orochi, they hear something, so they're all like mad shook and they turn around. So we see how big Kaido's army is, right? They'll see if King is there, the numbers might be there, whatever the case may be. So like you have all of them right there together. And the following page, in a magnificent open spread, is the King in the middle, Law on the right, Kid on the left, and their crews behind them. Right, so it's like, and especially if like Luffy's fleet shows up and Jinbei, so you have like this massive fleet behind Luffy. So like, Kid has his crew, Law has his crew, but Luffy has a whole fleet. He comes up in the like, dog, popping the collar, bro, guys with the king's coat, and it's like, yo, we're here, we're here. Yo, man, I'm dude, we have, this, this could be the start of like the most incredible stretch of chapters that we have seen in the series so far, man. I mean, seriously, it is gonna be so much fun to read this and I'm so glad there's no break next week. Like just imagine the dope way spread with all of them, like, yo, we're ready to box. Like, let's get this war started. Or like Luffy throws the first punch or something, indicating like Kaido's like, hey man, what we got going on here? Or Orochi's like in mid drinking, he's like, yo. And so he sees Luffy pull back the thing and he punches him as like, dog, let's go. I ain't here for words. I'm here to throw hands. You know, man, like, dog. When you're at sea, you fight against pirates, man. And the fact that we're gonna have all three of these characters together. And one more thing, right? Now that we have Luffy, Kid, and Law together, I truly do expect for us to... I already thought that was gonna happen uh, because I thought we were gonna get a blue no type of situation with, with Luffy uh, showing off his, his new acquired... His, his newly acquired strength, the real hockey. So I expected him to go up against like one of the numbers or maybe one of like uh, Kaido's underlings we haven't met yet or something around those lines to like have Luffy one shot him and showcase, you know, how strong he is before he, he goes on and takes on Kaido. But now we have a situation where it's Luffy, Kid, and Law. So if we get next chapter, 
either these individuals that are here, because I don't know if they're going to take Momonosuke with them, I don't know if they're going to take, uh, if they're gonna like escape with Kanjiro, I don't know if these guys are going to uh, go ahead and try to face Luffy, Kid, and Law, which if they do that, they're gonna get pwned, right? But let's just say they attempt to do it. Or if, let's just say they attempt to do it, they call them back up, the numbers come in. So let's just say we have a situation next week to where these guys, uh, the, these Sparta individuals, and the numbers, excuse me, and the numbers come in. So let's have one or two numbers. Or maybe just one of the numbers. So you have one of the numbers, and you have uh, these individuals that are here, right? So you're gonna have a situation where Luffy, Kid, and Law are obviously gonna be fighting about who gets to take out this dude. So you're gonna get a situation where we might have a coordinated one shot, similar to the one with Sanji and 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 uh, and Zoro whenever they took on the pacifist the post time skip. So you're gonna have Kid or Law try to activate his room. Right, and then right in the middle of that, Kid is gonna use his, is gonna grab all his metal, but what would be cool is if Oda, well, I don't know. I was gonna say it would be cool if we could see new techniques from all three next chapter, but I feel like Oda's gonna save them for Onigashima, but he could show them off, I'm, I'm not sure. But let's just say, regardless, we see the techniques that we know. Because regardless of whether we see the techniques that we know, or we see the techniques that we've already seen, it's gonna be hype. So let's just say Law, for for both the numbers and those on, his, on, on the crew, uses Room. Kid is ready to use Repel. He's ready to absorb everything, become Magneto 5.0 at this point. My man's going to be super goat. He's, he's going to attract the metal from the ship, bring him on board. I mean, my man is going to be going in like so more. And then the last one is the king. Can you imagine a scene? Luffy activates his real hockey. Kid has his fruit ready to go. Law has room. And it's just a coordinate or it's a coordinated and unintentional one shot that all three just obliter. I mean, talk about with no sweat, with no anything. They just flex and all of them get pwned. Now, what would be equally as good as that is that if the let's just say the ship comes and gets closer and closer with the numbers right behind them, one of the numbers, whatever. Um, I, th I think we're only going to see one of them, if we do see one of them. But let's just say Luffy and or Kid, or both, or maybe just Luffy, uses King's Hockey to knock out everyone on that ship. The numbers come in, and then you have, or if it's one, if it's multiple, I don't know. But then you have a situation where Luffy, Kid, and Law use a coordinated one-shot on said number. Or if three come in, and they all one-shot ace that number. Oh my god. God, bro. Dude, there are so many different possibilities of what could happen here. Because we could be treated to a King's Hockey scene. We could be treated to a coordinated attack scene similar to the one that we got back in Sabaody. Regardless, though, I cannot wait to see the interaction between all three of them as they go about this, man. Because you already know, because these dudes are under Kaido, they're not just going to want to spread. And if they do spread, they're going to substitute themselves with somebody who's stronger than them. But I guarantee you, anyone, if next chapter... We have anyone who tries Kid Law and Luffy. There is no way in the Flying Flatters they're going to one-shot it. There's no way. When you have Kid Law and Luffy there, bro, those guys are going to get destroyed. I don't care if you bring in millions. You know, no pun intended to, to Jack. The billions, the millions, bro, I don't matter. So you can go all the way back to broke works. Bring in the billions, the millions, the, it don't matter. We are going up in like swimwear. Whatever happens, bro. And I cannot wait to see what that is, dude. I mean, seriously. I truly do think that we're going to have a showcase of just how goat these individuals are before we get into Onigashima. I mean, we have to. We don't know the extents of how much stronger Luffy is at this point in time. Let alone Law and Kid. We've seen Luffy's training. Law and Kid, we've only seen bits and, bits and pieces since we've seen them last. You know, Kid, we haven't been, we've, been, we've barely been able to see, period. But Law, since Stress Rosa, we haven't been able to see what he's been able to implement, you know, uh, more with his room, with his shambles. I mean, of course, he took on Hawkins and whatnot, but that was for a little scuffle. Here, we're going to be able to see everything in full force, right? So I'm super excited to see what new techniques and or abilities they decide to show off, which inevitably they're going to have whenever we get into Onigashima. But before we get to Onigashima, I am curious on how Oda's going to go about this. Because he can easily, next chapter, go out from this and go straight to the fire festival. Treat us to the fire festival. Like I said before, we could see some of the straw hats like going about in their espionage while they're going about it. The next time we see Lockheed and Luffy is right in front of Kaido. Or he gives us a chapter next week where it's Law, where it's Law Luffy and Kid going up in like Swimmer against these, these fodder individuals. 
Regardless of what happens, though, it's very, very exciting because, like I said, man, it, regardless of whether it's abilities we've seen already, regardless of it's the same old character interactions, it's not going to stop any of it from being exciting, dude, because we have been waiting for these moments for so long. And what's beautiful about One Piece is that it doesn't matter if you've been caught up since the very beginning or if you just caught up yesterday because of the length of the series, it makes you feel like you've been with it for a long time. So no matter when it is that you caught up, you have nostalgia for that Sabaori scene, dude. And so like, all of us together collectively, as I've been able to see in the comment section, in the community, on Twitter, and stuff like that, we're all super excited to see Law, Luffy, and Kid interacting and what they're going to do together. Because I'll tell you what, man, these three together working in a manner in which all of them can utilize their potential to the highest, Kaido, you better, yo, Kaido better relax, because yo, Law's entire journey up until this point in time is to take that man down. Luffy said, I'm taking that man down, and Kid said he's taking that man down. I don't know who's touching Big Mom, right? I don't know if Big Mom's going to be left to... I have a completely different division. I don't know if another Yonko's coming to take care of Big Mom. I don't. I don't know if uh, if revolutionaries uh, Weevil. I, I don't know. I don't know who's coming in to take on the monster that is Big Mom. But I can tell you that if Law, Luffy, and Kid collectively take on Kaido in a boss battle of epic proportions, going back to like a classic JRPG, they have a chance. I truly do believe that at their fullest potential. All three, even if all three of them e e ended off like barely breathing, they can do it. I really do believe so. Utilizing the fullest of their potentials, I think they can do it. Now, of course, Luffy's gonna eventually have to defeat him himself because of the president of, you know, if it's one on one bet on Kaido and whatnot. And that final sequence has to be Luffy versus, versus Kaido. But I think leading up to that, we're going to see some major damage coming from all three. And regardless of who else decides to join in on the battle, whether we get the rest of the Strats, whether we get the Scabbers, I don't know. You know, inevitably we're probably going to get a, a situation with Conjuro versus Kinemon. That's going to be a very, very emotional battle. And of course, whatever happens with Momonosuke and Orochi and Hiyori and Orochi or Denjiro, you know, whatever happens there. But at the very least, whenever it comes to Law, Luffy, and Kid, we can expect some greatness here in Onigashima from their crews and from themselves. So I cannot wait, man. I am super, 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 super excited as all of you are, bro. That is one of my favorite endings to a chapter. And I feel like I've been saying this the, the entirety of Wano, that it's one of my favorite moments, you know, that I've, that I've experienced. But dude, whenever you have a situation where all three of them come back together again in the manner that they did in, this, in that situation, because there's one thing to come back and the situation that surrounds it, you know, it makes you feel out of place. This felt so in place. And it's the circumstances. We haven't seen Luffy in so long. So just seeing him and he's rocking the cloak by itself is hype. And the fact that he's together with Law and Kid is even more hype because it's surprising. And then, and then you have the nostalgia factor of gold, bro. It's all three of them together again. And the way that it was handled with not being able to see their faces for a while. It's just, man, I am so, 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 so excited. God, man. Like, the possibilities that could take place from here until the beginning of Onigashima, like, we just don't know. We don't know how long it's going to take for Onigashima to start. Like I said, we could start next week, where the Fire Festival starts, and, like, we're going back and forth between the Fire Festival and this. Or we just stay at the Fire Festival, and the next time we see Lock and Luffy's whenever they show up in front of Kaido. Or we follow Luffy's journey to get to Onigashima, so it's Luffy, Law, and Kid going from, like, somewhere against everyone. So everyone who attempts to stop them just gets waxed. Showcasing the Kaido, like, dog, we ain't playing no games. These are three emperor level dudes who have the potential to be emperors and one of them is an emperor in the king baby look at him dude he's, he, let him use conqueror's hockey let him use with that coat that coat is an attribute it elevates his conqueror's hockey plus 50. plus 50. it elevates the luffy car from a galaxy opal to a prime galaxy opal he goes beyond galaxy opal man i mean seriously dude i mean with that coat on with the coat and the straw hat on, Luffy's gonna pwn anyone. Bring on anyone, dude. He's waxing upset. Dog, I am so excited. Can't wait to see what happens, whether it's coordinated attacks, just the character interactions, whatever. Luffy, Kid, and Law are here. They are ready to go up in like swimwear. The auction trio, man. Dog! But it's just gonna be super exciting, man. And the fact we have Power Warriors uh, 4 coming out soon, so I get to use all these characters and how they are right now. And it's, it's gonna, man, dude. This arc's gonna be so much fun because 
it's gonna be Marine Ford, but with characters that that that, that we are accustomed to seeing, right? And then it, and it's still gonna have that Marine Ford type of effect where we are with characters that we normally don't see. But this time around, we have more of the strides here, and it's just gonna be super, super, super excited. I, I yo, I'm sure y'all understand, man. Like yo. Just so many different possibilities and ideas and things that could take place, man. But I just, I wanted to get all this off my chest, bro. This was it, technically an afterthoughts, but I, specifically for like one portion of the chapter. I just need to get off all that hype off my chest, man. I mean, that's all I couldn't stop thinking about it, bro. Like all the different possibilities that we could see. And uh, God, man, it's exciting, dude. I cannot wait to see what is going to happen uh, next week and beyond. Um, if we do end up getting some awesome coordinated attacks and some one shots next week for all three captains flexing oh that's gonna be so good it's gonna end up being one of my most reread chapters in the arc because i just i love chapters like that man and gosh being able to compare it to like how they were back in sub audio and whatnot it... but yeah man it's gonna be super exciting cannot wait for onigashima even I mean, I'm even more excited for Onigashima. Like the the flashback itself had me more excited for Onigashima than I already was. Then this chapter came around, and my hype le hit critical levels. I was like, dude, I just need this arc. I need this arc, bro. And it's like you get a chapter like this, and then like you realize, like Flagman, like like I said at the beginning of the last chapter. Like man, where we are right now, anything could be go. Whether we go to around the world, or whether we go to Onigashima, or we or we stay in the flashback, it's gonna be amazing. So regardless of what Oda does, it's gonna be go, bro. Like. Like, you just think about God, man, we're here in in Onigashima with Luffy long covered to go up in, like, somewhere. But by God, around the world, you still have the Sabo situation and, and Hancock Mihawk and, oh, I was like, ah. But regardless, man, I'll see y'all next time. Have an awesome summer day. Let me know what y'all thought about this portion of the chapter, if you have any additional thoughts to add on. Uh, like I said, there, this, there was no cohesion in this discussion, man. I just really wanted to get all that off my chest, bro. I'm so excited to have all three of them together. Because, like, man, I'll never forget how hyped I was whenever I saw uh, Law and Punk Hazard. And then whenever I saw Kid on on uh, Wano with Luffy both in the prison, I was like, dude, but now to have the best of both worlds again and you have all three of them together in such a surprising fashion. And the fact that this is our first time seeing Luffy in so long, it was just, it was the perfect storm, man. Like my man Law said, the D causes a storm and it most certainly did this time, man. Shout out to the king. It is a goat in a coat. We are in like swimwear, dude. When you're at sea, you fight against pirates. What a magnificent chapter, man. I can't wait for next week. I will see y'all next time. Hoping to react to the episode either tonight or tomorrow morning. And Stampede comes out tomorrow, so that's going to be really awesome stuff. It's a wonderful week, man. Shout out, shout out to the big three, bro. Luffy, Kid, and Law. Ready to go for Lake Swimwear with their club. Dude, the fact that this man laws and we probably rock in Corazon's cloak as y'all have been saying in the comments. That's gonna hit, man. Yo, bro, I mean, they just all look so fresh. I can't wait to see if the other straw hats have like some new fits on too. I, I... Ah, man, I'm out of here, dude. I could, I could sit here and talk about this chapter all day, dog. <laughs>